Believe it or not, sightseers, a little northeast of Green Bay, along the shores of Lake Michigan, sits a Wisconsin town that's been dubbed one of America's hidden gems. And we're headed there now. Hey sightseers, Sightseeing Sally here. I'm with Meander and Marty. And today we're checking out Algoma, the Wisconsin town that has the distinction of being one of America's hidden gems. At least according to Only in Your State. Let's go check it out. And we're gonna find out the answers today. To start things off, we're exploring the waterfront because if you didn't know, Algoma is right on Lake Michigan here. And because of its location and being a former port on the lake for various industries, you'll find several shipwrecks out in the waters here, including the famous Christmas tree ship. As a matter of fact, one of the Christmas tree ships is still sitting upriver between two bridges in town here. You'll find that this sign explains that there is a shipwreck, the schooner Daniel Lyons, which is located about eight miles northeast of here, out somewhere out in the lake. If you look here, they show a model of a ship here in its heyday, in the three, three masted ship. And down here, they actually show how it's laying on the bottom eight miles out northeast of here, which where we're standing from this sign, my direction is correct, it'd be about in this direction actually, a little straight out and to our left. So not quite in the direction that I pointed to, was it? No, you could be right. I'm just trying to guess from the shoreline here. I mean, obviously east is this way somewhere. <laughs> yeah, we know where east is, which how far northeast is up for debate. One nice thing about the Great Lakes is that preserves these old ships very well, you know, in this cold water here. And we don't have salt with, you know, with barnacles and coral and all that, which helps preserve everything. You can see that there are a variety of boats docked here at the marina. Anything from a simple sailboat to some pretty extravagant fishing boats. You can see those over there are probably more like charter boats because they got all the rods hanging off of them. And if you're not familiar with charter boats, well, charter boats are just boats you rent and you go out on the water and go out fishing. They take you out. They're like a guide service. And they like to name their boats, like this blue one over here is named Cook's Catch. And you have the Obsession 4. And last but not least, you have the Sheet Show. You're making that one YouTube friendly, aren't you? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm all about friendliness. Just look at me. Does this show, does this look friendly to you? <laughs> Do I have to answer that? With tour season basically on the end and school starting and the holiday now over, they are working on the breakwater, repairing it, restoring it. And being that Algoma is on the water and sound carries, Throughout our video today, our episode today, you'll likely hear them working in the background. It's just the nature of how things work when you're on the water. Over here where Marty is standing, you can see an old anchor that's kind of just hanging out here by these flowers, this flower bed. One thing about those anchors, as large as that is, believe it or not, they do come a lot bigger out here on the lake. Growing up here on the lake, I've always thought of Lake Michigan as being our own personal miniaturized ocean. And in all intensive purposes, the way it behaves is very similar to an ocean. Even though today the waves are relatively calm, uh, you know, you can see a few white caps out there in the distance, but they do roll in quite large on a stormy day. And if you look out there, you can't see the other side. You know, it's so big that you just can't see. It's like you can look forever off into the distance and all you see is water. And that's how it is over by the ocean. Anyways, I'm digressing. I realized that 
for some, the lake may play a small part. But in all reality, being here on the lake is one of the reasons why Algoma would be considered one of America's gems. You have direct access to the lake and all the activities that go along with it, including a beach, which is where we're gonna to head to next. Known as Crescent Beach, they also have a boardwalk that you can walk along. You can see today, there's more birds on the beach than there are people. And that's because we are filming midweek, school's back in session, and really after tourist season ends, the locals find the beaches a lot more quiet where you can take a stroll along the water shoreline without bumping into kids or other adults, which rarely happens during the height of summer and tourist season. Now, in case you're wondering why Crescent Beach is more rocky and gravelly than some of the other beaches you may have seen along the shores of Lake Michigan, there's a sign over here that explains how that came about. According to the sign, the environment here was created by the actions of wind and water coming from Lake Michigan. Basically, the storms that came off the lake had a lot of energy and they just created this beach that was rather steep and then rocky. The rocks having been left behind by glaciers. Of course, nowadays you've got the grass growing on the hill, the boardwalk on which tourists and locals can walk and steps making it easier to access the beach. Well, sightseers, what do you think of Algoma so far? Does this Wisconsin town really fit the bill of being one of America's hidden gems? Now, sightseers, if you're into camping, one of the nice things about Algoma is that they do have camping here along the lakefront. You'll find that over at the Sunrise Cove Marina and Campground. And as you can see, the campers are just right there along the water's edge. And then if you look over here, you can see this really cool looking place. It has Key West vibes all over it. Known as Smashed on the Rock Saloon, here they serve up award-winning drinks like Bloody Marys. You know the types of Bloody Marys I'm talking about where you get so much stuff with your Bloody Mary. It's like you're being served up a meal. Well, here, I guess, you get served up so much stuff, it's like you're eating three meals. Unfortunately, today they're closed, but I'm pretty sure the reviews on Facebook speak for themselves. Oh, check this out. Their patio is even pet friendly. And now we already have a reason to come back next summer. Another really cool thing about Algoma being here on the lake is that you can see they still have the old lighthouse here. Obviously you can't get out to it because they have the stairs, you know, covered with metal to keep looky-loos from trying to make the dangerous ascent up and across. Should have brought our radio, Sally. You can see the sign to energize the fog horn. Key your microphone five times on channel 83. Too bad we didn't bring our radio along. We could have set it off for everybody. As interesting as it is to see, for insurance purposes, I am not recommending this as a sightseeing stop if you come to Algoma, because it does seem a little bit hairy carry, a little sketchy to be out here if you ask me. While we're out here, I do want to point out, however, how beautiful the shoreline looks from here. And you also have a really great view looking towards the town. Next up, one more reason why Algoma would be considered a hidden gem in America. The Von Steel Winery. Open daily from 10 to 5, they offer wine tastings for a nominal fee. This isn't my first time coming here. Back in the day, many years ago, came out here with a couple of girlfriends to check it out. Back then, I think they actually offered free wine tastings. Before we go in though, I just wanna point out that this building is on the National Register of Historic Places.
Ooh. Drink, 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 drink. Consider that a reason why you don't bring Marty to a wine tasting. <laughs> As you can see, you can come out here, enjoy wine tasting alone or with friends. They have quite a selection. This is the premium wines here. And then if we open up, they have ones that aren't quite as premium, but they're still considered select. And then back here are the budget options. Our options. And that's us, low budget, the budget options. Well, we learned a little bit about the building. We found out that when it was originally built, it was the Anapi Brewery. And it was open for about maybe, I think she said 20 years before it ended up closing. Apparently there was a blight in the hops that caused a downturn in the whole brewing making business that they had to close. Now, if you are the type that prefer cider or beers, you can come over to this section here and do some tasting as well. Having done the wine tasting, we're not going to do that today. But if their brewery and their cider making is anything like their winery, I can assure you it's definitely worth a stop if you're into that sort of thing. This building here looks like it's probably original. I like how they got the Perina Chows on it. Every once in a while you still see that checker pattern on old mills and stuff when you go around. So I'm looking over at the side of the building there. Is that sheet mill that's on the side of the building, Marty, or is that something else? That's old tin siding. We've seen that all west on a few places. I also like the old tin roof that's on it too, that's original. The other thing about this section of town that I find interesting are these old towers here. And those are probably old grain silos. You can't see, right behind it is the river. So they might have brought the grain in along the river here somewhere. And then they might have just dispersed it into wagons or they might have bagged it and then sold it right here in this feed store. I wouldn't know exactly, but if I was guessing, that's what I would say. I think it adds to the charm of the town, making it another reason why Algoma would be considered one of America's hidden gems. Well, before we go any further, I have a quick shout out I want to give. I want to give a special thanks out to Jerry and Joan from West Bend for tipping our trip jar. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. It helps get us out to all these unique little towns across America. Now, interestingly enough, this building, which appears to have been the old Algoma Farmers Co-op, is now a gift store. Why don't we go take a quick look-see inside and see what they sell. Of course, while I'm going inside into the gift store, Marty's going into the St. Vinny's of Algoma. Interestingly enough, what I had thought to be a small gift shop turned out to be a factory outlet store for the ever popular birdseed company known as Havgar. And while the majority of items in the shop are indeed birdseed, you will also find some rather unique gift items representing the local area. Do you see the sign that says Anape Construction? I just want to mention for those of you who are interested in learning a little bit about Algoma's early history is that before it was known as Algoma, it was known as Anape. Later, they changed the name to Algoma and Anape has been kind of more or less a name that gets used in a lot of businesses around here. And if I'm not mistaken, there may even be a section of town, maybe outside the limits, that is called Anape. Up along the side of this white building, you can see several murals. The first one is this one that says Big Jim. It's highlighting Algoma's steam heritage. The other one shows a view of the commercial fishing industry. Frank Kobeck and Sons, all men's or men's all wool suits, 15 bucks. That ain't happening today. You can't even buy wool socks for $15. We're heading into the downtown area of Algoma and you can see it is very quaint. It has a lot of old historic buildings 
I imagine there's a lot of neat venues here, some really cool shops that you can go visit, like the Secondhand Rose. And here's another view of the Secondhand Rose. I like that. Almost looks like a castle to me. Yes, that is definitely a neat building. I wish we had more time. We could run inside and check it out. Now that looks familiar. I wonder what that's from. I recognize that. I don't know, Marty, but this appears to be an art gallery known as Yonder. Next door to Yonder, you'll find a bookstore known as Yardstick. Oh look, there is another mural for Reinhardt Brothers Quality Shoes. Well, they weren't kidding when they said that Algoma was a hidden gem, was one of America's hidden gems. Oops. <laughs> Quite breezy out here today. Now that I got my hat secured under my head, I want to point out the mural that's on the side of this next building. A tribute to the Anape and Western Railroad, the shortest line between Winona, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and the Atlantic Seaboard. On all the buildings here, this bank, this old bank of Algoma building from 1913 has got to be my favorite. You got the old pillars here. That building looks like it's faced in limestone, and those pillars look like they might be like a gray marble. Just amazing. And I like how it curves in on the sides there, and it's tucked into that cold the door. Look at Marty. He's a dog. Well, he looks friendly. <laughs> oh, he's wagging his tail. <laughs> So cute. Uh oh. On this corner, we have the cool old Stebbins Hotel. Now it's called the Hotel Stebbins Restaurant and Bar. I don't think they have rooms to rent anymore, but I could be wrong. They have a menu posted. Why don't we go check it out? I know Marty said that he doesn't think that they still offer rooms here, but you never know, they might. Well, here's the info on the restaurant. It's closed Sunday and Monday. And Tuesday and Wednesday, the bar opens at 4.30 with dining starting at 5, with the last seating being at 8. And this is what's on the menu. Steak and seafood. Mm. Two popular favorites. I think you can tell by now, sightseers, that the writers at Only In Your State, Wisconsin, was correct in saying that Algoma is a hidden gem, is one of America's hidden gems. You can see their downtown is filled with a lot of unique offerings in these old historic buildings. Places like the Ladybug Glass Studio and Gallery, Bella Luna's Apothecary and Boutique, and the Steel Street trading company and gallery. Not to mention sightseers, Algoma is about 25 minutes from Sturgeon Bay, which is the start of Door County. Staying here in Algoma keeps you out of the craziness of Door County. Door County is a huge tourist attraction in summer, and by coming out and staying in Algoma, you can avoid that, but yet still be within easy driving distance of Door County. And it's trivia time. This old building that's sitting on 4th Street here in Algoma. Can you guess what this used to be before they took the letters off the sign? So you're going to explain what it used to be? Or are you going to keep me in suspense? I'll let you know at the end of the video. Okay, because I have no idea, sightseers. Now some of you might be wondering why we haven't stopped and gotten something to eat. Well, it is the end of tourist season, and a lot of places are closed at this time of day. It's just no big deal. You know, we brought snacks, whatever, to hold us over. But I want to point out something that you probably wouldn't see anywhere else here in Wisconsin. That, what does that remind you of? I don't know if she ever graced the front of a ship here on Lake Michigan. 
but she certainly brings something to the vibe here on 4th Street. This is right up my alley. Son of Scallywags, the original five-star dive bar. That's my type of place to be drinking them at. Yeah, that definitely looks right up Marty's alley. One place that I used to frequent years ago was Cafe Tolazo. Back then, it was a great little venue to grab a coffee, a tea, and a small bite to eat. And according to Google reviews, it has a 4.6 star review rating. So I would say that that still holds true. Well, sightseers, it's getting time to wrap this up. What do you think? Did Algoma, did this Wisconsin town, is it really a hidden gem, one of America's hidden gems? Why don't you weigh in and let us know what you think. I know we weren't able to show you everything in this Wisconsin town that makes it one of America's hidden gems, but you know, that just leaves the door open for us to come back. As for Marty's little quiz. The answer is Ben Franklin. <laughs>